Hello students, welcome to Sign Media from Online Bible Classes. So this is the 11th day of Human Reproduction chapter. In the last class we covered the, the major event of the Human Reproduction event that is a uh, fertilization. Okay? So fertilization is a big event. So what actually occurs? So the ovulation occurs exactly on the 14th day. That is nothing but the second new site. So which is covered by the, the zona pellicida and the corona radica. The second new site suddenly taken by the, the fimbri of the infant with the second two side enter into this allocated here. Yeah. So meanwhile, if the coitus occur during the fertile the, the period from the 12th day to 16th day of the menstrual cycle, then the semen is also present in the vagina. The sperms which are present in the semen undergo a capacitation. Capacitation means uh, the membrane covering the acrosomal membrane thins, became thinner, huh? then the uh, the undulating movement turns into whiplash type movement. So gradually the sperm capacity increases. The sperm gradually enter the cervical canal and enter into the uterus. So due to the action of the prostaglandins and the oxytocin, the uterine contraction occurs, and due to that, the sperm suddenly enter into the fallopian tube. So next comes the approximation of the sperm and the ovum. So the second side will remain here only. The sperm will travel to the fallopian tube and come near the ovum. Okay? When the sperm reaches the corona radiata, the outer layer, okay? so the acrosome uh, releases the sub uh, content. Means acrosome releases the hyaluronidase that will dissolve the hyaluronic acid and the corona radiata cells a little bit suffers. Yeah? Meanwhile, corona penetrating enzymes also secreted. So that's why corona, uh, the sperm easily crosses the, the corona radiata and touches the zona pellicida. Once it touches the zona pellicida, the, the means the zona pellicida, here the compatibility reaction takes place. Then the fertilizing of the zona pellicida and anti fertilizing of the sperm and men, which are compatible to each other, if they come from the same species. They are competent one and it will accept the sperm. So the fertilizing is present on the ovum and the anti-fertilizing present in the sperm membrane. So both are competent. So once the, the sperm is accepted, then at the same time from the acrosome only, zonalizing or the acrosome, zonalizing or the uh, zonalizing is secreted, acrosome is secreted one, then the zona pellicida dissolve and sperm enter into the inside. So except plasma membrane means everything enter into inside. Then the sperm touches the plasma membrane. Yes, once it touches the plasma membrane, so that will produce the fertilization form. Yes, so gradually sperm enter into the uh, secondary side, except the plasma membrane, head, neck, tail, then middle piece, everything enter into the egg one. Now the egg reaction starts. Once the sperm enter one, so cortical reaction takes place. The cortical granules which are present in the second two side will uh, undergo exocytosis. It releases the content into the perivitaline space. Gradually the plasma membrane turns into fertilization membrane and the acrosome become a little bit thicker. Yes. So gradually the receptors for the sperm which are present on the acrosome, they deactivate it. And due to that one, this all activity promotes the monospermy and prevent the polyspermy. Once the sperm enter into the skin side, then the, it triggers the meiotic division. So the meiosis which is stopped in the metaphase stage one, the metaphase stage completes and anaphase stage begins one. So now secondary side undergoes second meiotic division, produce protein and second polar body. Second polar body again will uh, collect it toward the one corner and this protein which contain the haploid number of chromosome and the male nucleus is also present in that one. So both will combine and form the undergo the main event that is called syngeny or the amphibixis. Now the diploid cycle is formed. So this is overall event of the fertilization. Fertilization takes place in the ampulla isthmus junction. I think this much is clear for you. Yeah? So now after fertilization, what happens? That is embryonic development. Embryonic development means so it includes many events, embryonic uh, uh, development, so it can be divided into two phases, means first one is a event, 
next second one is the period what are the in, uh, events include with the enduring development means first one is the cleavage second one is the last two cis formation then implantation then gastrulation then organogenesis so these are all event take place in the embryo term cleavage is there the blastocyst formation then implantation occur gastrulation occur then organogenesis occur the period means again it is divided to two period that is the early embryonic development then late embryonic development early embryonic development means in that one same what they will do out so it include cleavage blastocyst formation implantation gastrulation these are all early embryonic development so next late embryonic development means here it include morpho genetic and organo genesis occur it is a late embryonic development so ultimately the embryonic development take place means it start from the fallopian tube and it complete in the uterine cavity so this is about the embryonic development when it is the first one so one by one we are going to cover in that one cleavage is there blastocyst structure we are going to cover implantation we are going to cover then gastrulation organogenesis these are the way of it after that the placenta formation topic we are going to cover first one is a cleavage out of this one first one is a cleavage so what the zygote forms means after fertilization diploid zygote is formed which contain 40 septopore of chromosome it is same mitotic division only but it is specifically called as a cleavage clear so it is it is a mitotic division only so it is called as a cleavage now this is a zygote this is a zygote which contain diploid chromosome and this covered with the zona pellucida still the zona pellucida is present yes so this is a diploid zygote means this zygote is present somewhat here this is a zygote yes this zygote undergo first mitotic division and it produce two blastocoelia so this is the first division and it produce two blastocoelia and still it is covered with the zona pellucida so this first mitotic division after 30 hours after 30 hours after fertilization was the fertilization of the after that after 30 hours first cleavage of then second cleavage it is perpendicular to the first one this is the first cleavage this is a second cleavage still it is covered with the zona pellucida yes now number of blastocoel in this now can you observe it so this is a zygote this is a embryo with a two blastocoelia but the size of the blastocoelia is almost same one, equal to the other this cleavage is a holoblastic holoblastic means from animal pole to the vegetal pole the complete division takes place because in uh, the second side the yolk is not there due to the, the small due to absence of yolk 
the complete holoplastic cleavage takes place. So these are the blastoma here. The second cleavage occurs after 60 hours after. Fertilization. So first cleavage of 30 hours, second cleavage of 60 hours. Now this embryo contains four blastomas. But the overall size of this embryo is same. It is covered by the zona pellicida, but gradually the size of the blastomia decreases. So this is a full blastomia. Now third cleavage takes place after 72 hours. 72 hours after. Fertilization. Now the embryo consists of eight cells. So this embryo consists of eight cells. So roughly, no, this is the eight cell. Yes, eight cell. Okay. Then further division of this. After seven hours, one more division of this. Now. Here, two classroom here. Four classroom here. Eight classroom here. Now you have sixteen classroom. So now 16 blastomeres are there. So this is a embryo. Now further it undergoes division and produce 32 blastomeres. So this is a 16 last two meter. So in this one 32 last two meters. So this this step, uh, this solid structure with the 32 last two meter also covered with the zona pellicida. So the outermost layer is a zona pellicida. Yes. So now this type of division is called the cleavage. Cleavage means the overall size of the embryo, size, the embryo, the, this structure is almost similar to the zygote one. So if you stay thin here, observe this one. Gradually, the nucleocytoplasmic ratio of each cell gradually decreases. The total mass of all blastoma is equal to the mass of this zygote. The size has not increased. The number of cells increase one, the gradually the size of the blastomere decreases one. So we will compare the, with the mitosis one. In mitosis, the interface is a little bit longer. But in cleavage one, interface is a little bit short. It undergoes repeated division. So gradually the size of the blastomere goes on decreases. But when you take the mitosis, due to the interface, the size of the cell increases. The size of the means cell increases one. So here the size of the blastomere decreases one. So now the cell, the 16 or 32 cell structure, this is particularly this the solid wall with the 16 to 32 blastoma is called as the volula. Clear? So this either 16 cell or 32 cell solid wall like structure where the, uh, the outer cells are with the tight junction very compact area, inner cells are with a bit loose area. This is called as the volula. Now this molecular undergo next event that is called the blastocyst formation. Now here only, so this now complete division, this all division take place here only. First cleavage, second cleavage, third cleavage, fourth cleavage, and this is the morula, and this morula will gradually descend into the uterine. Till that one, this morula turns into the blastocyst. Now 
how the blastoses appear. So this complete structure is called as a morula. Yes. Now this morula turns into blastocyst. So blastocyst means so it is covered by the thin barrel shaped cells. So this outer covering is called as a trophoblast. So this is a Trophy blast towards one side of this one cells are present. So these are the same blastomia which are pushed towards the one side. The outer membrane is called the trophoblast. This is a inner cell mass of the inner mass of cells we yeah? inner mass of cells yes so this one the cavity which is filled with the fluid one this is called as a blasto seal where the fluid filled cavity is there this is called the blasto seal this is blue color is called the inner mass of cells one. Yes, the outer covering. This is called the blastocyst or the trophoblast or trophoectoderm. Yes, the cells which are of the trophoblast in touch with this inner mass of cell one. These cells, these are called the cells of round one. Cells of round these cells. Yes, so the fluid is there, the inner mass of cells are there, this is a trophoblast, where the, the pole, this cell, where the inner mass of cell is attached by, this end is called an embryonic pole, this is a embryonic pole, and the opposite to this one, this is an embryonic so this is a blastocyst. Now this is also covered with the outer membrane. That is nothing but the zona pellucida. So this outer membrane is again zona pellucida. Till the formation of the blastocyst, zona pellucida is still present. Yes. So the first is the zygo, first cleavage after 30 minutes, that 30 hours, second cleavage after 60 hours, third cleavage after 70 hours. Gradually the number of blastomere increases, but overall size of the embryo remains same. This blastocyst also present inside this zona pellucida. Here also size of this blastocyst is same, but due to the accumulation of this blastocyst and the fluid one, gradually it exerts the pressure till that one it reaches the uterine cavity here. Now, gradually, the zona pellucida ruptures or it became thin and this blastocyst will come outside this zona pellucida, gradually. So, during that time, so this is a zona pellucida and this is a blastocyst here. Yeah? So, it dissolves the blastocyst and gradually it comes outside. So, while coming, it comes in the form of eight shape like this one, it come like this one. The folded one. Suppose if in this situation if division occurs, okay, if it divided the blastocyst divided into two pieces, the both will develop into different zygotes. Okay, both will attach to the uterus and both will develop into different fetus. One. Such zygotes are called the monozygotic twins. If the blastocyst divide and, and implantation and both will develop into different degree, then it is called the monozygotic twins. So if the blastocyst will come outside and it is intact, so if the blastocyst emerges outside and it contains trophoblast and inner mass of cell, then this will undergo implantation and that will occur in the uterine cavity. So this is about only cleavage. The cleavage is totally different from the normal mitosis division, where the 
the size of the cell increases the nucleocytoplasmic ratio also increases but here the size of the plastomere decreases nucleocytoplasmic ratio increases but overall size of the embryo will remain same here so this is the plastosis which came outside the zona pellucida now this will undergo implantation on the endometrial membrane here so this is about the uh, cleavage now here when you take the plastosis in detail okay, the outer this membrane is called a protoplast where the cell in eye junction only they are intact present towards the one core of this one the, the cluster of cells are there this is the inner mass of cells one so actually this region is going to develop into the embryo here and trophoblast will produce the some extra embryonic membrane and produce some hormones and from this trophoblast only the attachment takes the chorea nuclei are produced one and the these cells of trophoblast which are in touch with this inner mass of cell that is called the cells of Rauber and this is a fluid filled cavity that is called a blastocyte and this complete structure is covered with the thick membrane that is called the zona pellucida clear so this is about the cleavage which is the first event of embryonic development now next one is the blastocyst formation also we covered implantation we are going to cover then the gastrulation clear so this is about the only cleavage yes with the short pause we will continue the next topic Yes, sir. the next topic is uh, uh, implantation. Yeah. So this is the blastocyst. So as I have told, so this is uh, embryonic pole or animal pole. So these cells are called as the cells of Rubber. So these cells are in the mass of cells, and this cavity is called blastocyst. The outer membrane is called the trophoblast. Yes. And this pole is called as a an embryonic or vegetal. Yes. Now, what is a fate? So, this inner mass of cell, uh, first trophoblast, the inner mass of cell, this will develop into embryo. Yes. So, under gastrulation, okay. So this embryo uh, produce three germinal layers. So first one. So it undergo gastrulation produced three germ layers, which are nothing but ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. So the with the involvement of this one, organogenesis, morphogenetic movement will take place, and this collectively develop into embryo. Yes, the blastocyst is a fluid filled cavity. This will allow the it will provide the space for the development of embryo. Okay? So trophoblast, it is outermost layer. So this trophoblast produces the mesoderm. Some extent. In mesoderm, again two types are there. That is the somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm. Planko planken. Pluric extra embryonic mesoderm. 
Yes. So some extent mesoderm is produced in the in this uh, inner mass of cell, okay? and mesoderm is also produced from the trophoblast. And this trophoblast help in development of the collectively. This will help in the development of embryonic membrane that is uh, extra embryonic membrane that is chorion, amnion, allantois, and eos. So all they develop from this trophoblast plate. Okay? So chorion, amnion, allantois, yolk sac. These are the extra embryonic membrane one. So this trophoblast also help in production of some hormones like the HCG. This trophoblast, so specifically this one, somatoclinic extra embryonic membrane. This will produce HCG, which help to maintain the corpus luteum. This corpus luteum produces the progesterone. This progesterone is required for the pregnancy. So ultimately, the every cell involved in the some or other activity, the cells of rubber is attached to the inner mass of cell. This inner mass of cell undergo gastrulation to produce the three the germinal layer: ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm. So with the involvement of all three germ layer, different different organs are formed, and embryo develops from this inner mass of cell. So blastocyst is a fluid filled cavity which provides the space for the developing embryo. The trophoblast is the outermost layer. So this trophoblast, where it is attached to the inner mass of cell. So this cell is of the rubber. So in future it produces the chorionic villi for the implantation of it. And it produces the mesoderm. The mesoderm is put at somatoclinic extra embryonic mesoderm or splanchanoclinic extra embryonic mesoderm. So with the involvement of this and the ectoderm and uh, it produces an extra embryonic membrane. So which is present outside the ectoderm. The chorionic membrane, LN, amnion, allantoin, and yolk cell. Yeah? So they play a very important role in the embryonic development. Apart from this, this trophoblast produces the HCG, human coronian gonadotropin hormone. This HCG helps in the maintenance of the carpus luteum, which is nothing but the ruptured graphene follicle. This carpus luteum helps in production of the progesterone. This progesterone is required for the implantation. Now we will take the blastosis. So blastosis came here. So these are the inner mass of cell and surrounded by the uh, this one membrane here, yeah. trophoblast. So now enter into uterus. It landed on the endometrium one. So this is a blastosis and attached to the endometrium. Now this trophoblast cell gradually starts produce some lytic enzymes. So these lytic enzymes create the small pore or the it will damage the some of the endometrium cell. And this blastosis is stuck penetrating into this endometrium. Gradually, as the time passes, this blastosis is completely entered into this endometrium and which is completely covered by the, the uterine wall. So we will take this structure. So if you observe it. So this is the endometrium. Now this is the blastosis which is entered into the endometrium with this chorionic villi. These are the inner mass of cells here. So it is completely surrounded by the endometrium. So this is this is the endometrium. Now this blastosis which is entered into the endometrium, which is an internal. This blastosis is completely covered by the uterine membrane one, so which will provide the nourishment for the further development. So here we studied only about blastosis. Now how it entered and how it undergo gastrulation by pictorial uh, method we are going to study one. This is about protein the uh, blastosis here. So now I will draw the figure with the figure only I will explain. So till that point, pause is necessary. Yes, okay. these are the some figures. Uh, by this figure, we will understand how the implantation is occurring in the endometrium. Okay. So now, 
the blastocyst enter the uterine cavity now this blastocyst so in the will attach to the endometrium thing so this is a blastocyst the pole towards which the inner mass of cells are there that is the embryonic pole and this is called the adventure the trophoblast cell uh, towards the embryonic pole make attachment with the endometrium so this is the uterine wall which is the endometrium so this trophoblast cell these cells uh, will produce the, uh, the finger like projection that is called the for the penetration they may produce some uh, lytic enzymes due to that one so these endometrium layer gradually narrow one it will make a path for the penetration gradually so once it attached this one so after attachment the inner mass of cell undergo uh, further morphogenetic movement one gradually so inner mass of cell develop into different layers so this is the same structure so this is a trophoblast this is the inner mass of cell this is the embryonic membrane which is in touch with the endometrium member so here also this is the endometrium this is the endometrium so after the touch of this one this inner mass of cell this is called the embryonic disc one in that one two layers are there one is called the epiblast and this is called the hypoblast one so this is the embryonic wall here so outermost this is called as a hypoblast and this is called the epiblast so this is epiblast and this is hypoblast so the epiblast in future it develop into ectoderm and hypoblast it develop into endoderm yes two layers are formed here yeah. so here for the inner mass cell only two layers are formed the black color layer this is called the epiblast in future it develop into ectoderm surrounded that of hypoblast is there that will develop into future endoderm here so this is a trophoblast which produces the, the finger like projection for the penetration into the endometrium one so this one this layer so this cavity actually develop into amniotic cavity this is called the amniogenic cell one so this is amniotic cavity and this is the blastocyst which is already present here so this cavity is called as amniotic cavity which is also fluid filled okay so this is a the state where the blastocyst getting way into this endometrium layer clear so this is the endometrium epithelium or uterine epithelium uterine epithelium so this complete structure is called the uterine stroma uterine stroma collectively this is called as the endometrium yes so this so this is nothing but the trophoblast and this is the hypoblast this is the epiblast so this is called an amniotic cavity yes so this is the mid now this further penetrated completely enter into the endometrium so this outermost red color is called the uterine epithelium so this is called uterine stroma now this structure so this structure which is actually produced from the trophoblast so this is corium villus corium villus here yeah. so this blue color structure these are the mesodermal cells mesodermal cells so the mesodermal cells from this produce from the trophoblast only so it is present outside also it is surrounded the present only this is an extra embryonic cavity this is extra embryonic cavity now come here main part so this is a mesoderm now this layer again this is a epiblast this is a hypoblast epiblast and hypoblast epiblast develop into endoderm ectoderm hypoblast develop into ectoderm so this layer so this is 
amniotic cell, amniotic cell. So this is amniogenic cell, and this cavity is called the amniotic cavity. Amniotic cavity. This cavity now. This is nothing but the future yolk sac. Yes. So this is a yolk sac, but and everything is covered by the mesoderm. The mesoderm again two types: the somatopleuric extraembryonic mesoderm or the splanchopleuric splanchanopleuric extraembryonic mesoderm. But so this is the structure after 14 days. It means the implantation means after 14 days injection. The zygote will descend into uterus. No? After fertilization, means seven days after fertilization, the implantation. Of this is the figure of the 14th day of embryo, which is inside the endometrium. So this is the 14th day figure. So endometrium means the blastocysts enter into the endometrium. Complete implantation occurs. So this is about the implantation. So now the chorionic pillar, this one, uh, this chorionic villus. So this help in not only attachment also, this will help in the absorption of the nutrient also. Now completely, this chorionic pillus is surrounded by the, the chorionic stoma, where the, the maternal blood is there. Yeah. From this one, uh, nutrient is taken. So the endometrium is completely secretive during the pregnancy due to secretion of the progesterone. So this uterine stoma will provide the nourishment for the developing embryo. Gradually, here only the morphogenetic movement takes place, organogenesis takes place. This complete structure develops into embryo, and these all structures develop into extra embryonic cavity. That is the next figure. So, this is a simple figure one. This is nothing but the, this structure, which is developed into future embryo. Means, this is the embryo. After two months, the embryo shows the, the primate character. You can detect this one is a, the the features like means the development of limbs, hands, everything is there. The primate carrots are usually visible after the two months. Now this structure is called as a fetus. After two months, the same embryo can be called as a fetus. So this is a fetus. Now here three, four characters are there, extra embryonic membrane specifically. So this is the developing fetus. This cavity is called an amniotic cavity, and this membrane is called an amniotic membrane. So this is a amniotic cavity and this is chorium. So one one layer of the one. So this complete structure is called chorium. This second structure is called as amniotic. And this green color structure is nothing but yolk sac, which is vestigial in only. And this structure is called as a allantois. So these are the extra embryonic membrane, means which is present outside the embryo, which is produced from the tropoblast okay? The every external embryonic membrane. Will have a specific function. When you take this chorion one, so here two two layers are the outer black color layer. The chorion is made up of outer trophoblast. Inner somatopleuric extra embryonic membrane. So two years. This is a trophoblast, this is somatopleuric extra embryonic membrane, this is a mesoderm, extra embryonic mesoderm. So what is the function of chorion means it is outermost cavity here. So this will provide the uh, means uh, it will act as a extra embryonic lungs. So it will function as a lungs. So it will function as a lungs. So it will provide the, uh, it will help in the exchange of gases. So the chorion will act as extra embryonic lungs. The second one is the, the yolk sac. The yolk sac again 
so it is made up of outer meso -dermal. so it is made up of outer meso -dermal. outer mesoderm and inner endoderm so this mesoderm is a splanchanopteric extra endoderm mesoderm totally different from this one this yolk sac is vestigial human being it is present in other organism so this will produce the blood cells it will produce blood cells so for time being for six week one after that one, this function is taken by the liver, blood cell production, yeah? So in human being, the human, the homo sapiens, okay, the yolk sac is wasted. So later on, the function is given to the liver. So yolk sac is present here. Now, just beside to this one, yolk sac, ln is this one, yeah? The ln is, so it is made up of Outer mesoderm, outer mesoderm, and inner endoderm. Yes. What is the function of this one? This the uh, oriole will act as an extra embryonic lungs. This will extra embryonic excretory system. So, so ln is helping almost three function. It help in the Nutrition, digestion means nutrition also, even respiration also, and excretion. Yes, so electrolytes also play the very important role. So now the stalk of this yolk sac and electrolytes collectively form the umbilical cord, so which is attached to the gut of this entity. So when you see this stalk one, this is the stalk of yolk sac, this is the stalk of allantois, which is covered by the amniotic epithelium one. This complete structure, this structure is called as a umbilical cord. Umbilical cord. Yes, which is attached to the gut of the embryo. Now come to the last one, amnio. So amnio, it is again made up of outer mesoderm. Outer mesoderm, inner trophoblast. Yes, so every extra embryonic membrane made up of two, two membrane. This is made up of trophoblast and somatoclinic extra embryonic mesoderm. This is made up of somatoclinic extra embryonic mesoderm and trophoblast. So now when you take the yolk sac, it is made up of uh, Splanchanopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm plus endoderm. The LN prime is made up of Splanchanopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm plus endoderm. But function is so different. When we take the amniotic cavity, which is filled with the amniotic fluid, so this is a very important thing. The amniotic chamber will provide the, it will act as a cushion like material. So it will avoid the desiccation, it provides the protection for this developing embryo. So here only the some fluid is there, but the carrying of the test of this amniotic fluid one, the gender of the progeny can be detected one. Yes, so the umbilical cord present towards the, this one, so it is made up of the stalk of the umbilical cord and the stalk of the, the stalk of the yolk sac and stalk of the allantois is covered by the, the amniotic membrane. So this is about the, the figure of the extra amniotic membrane. Orion will act as an extra amniotic lungs. Allantois will act as an extra embryonic uh, kidney, so for the excretion function. Amnio will provide the protection space and it will protect the embryo against the temperature and the pressure also. So it will avoid the desiccation. Then the yolk sac is a vestigial organ in the human being. So, so this is a simple figure. So chorion will produce the chorionic villi. Here only you study. Gradually, this embryo develops into this embryonic cavity of okay? Here only morphogenetic movement, organogenesis take place every month at particular period, particular organs are done. So that organ development has given in the brief manner in the inside textbook. Yeah?
So this is about the implantation, how the blastocyst enter into endometrium and established after seven days after the fertilization. Yes. So this is the only pictorial topic. Yeah. In next class we are going to cover in detail about this external embryology. After that we will cover the uh, gestation period. What are the major changes occurred in the embryo within the nine months or the two sixty or two eighty days of gestation period? After that parturition and lactation. Yes. So again we will meet in the next video. Till then take care. Good night.